What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about T-Rex, the king of the dinosaurs and an animal that has had a ton of research done on it over the years. We've already talked about the controversial theories of scavenging and gone into detail on the whole soft tissue discovery done by Dr. Mary Schweitzer before and after some newer information on some paleontologists believing them to grow around 70% bigger than previously thought, I wanted to go over another classic theory that involved the Tyrannosaurus devastating bite. We all know that the Rex had one of the most bone-crushing set of jaws God gave any creature on the planet, but when it comes to that particular attribute, there was another theory involving its bite that I remember people used to talk about all the time. This entailed something similar to an old theory on Komodo dragons, namely that the Tyrannosaur had teeth filled with rotting flesh and bacteria that gave its bite a septic edge. So several years ago, one of the more popular theories surrounding the T-Rex happened to be this toxic bite, which was mainly attributed to the Tyrannosaur possibly having a similar attribute to something like modern Komodo dragons of today. Back in the 2000s, I remember people commenting on how these animals would attack their prey and the bite would eventually become infected or even rotten from the Komodo dragon's terrifying teeth. Once you've been bit, you might happen to get away, but that wouldn't solve the amount of the damage that had already been done which would lead to a really scary end because you're basically counting down the time you have left when it comes to that infection doing you in. Now, this was at one period in time something people believed may have been possible for Tyrannosaurus. And it was even something that I remember had its basis backed up by those bone-crushing jaws the T-Rex possessed. You see, with a bite force so powerful that it would literally devastate anything it grabbed a hold of, T-Rex would have had to have had massive amounts of raggedy flesh in its giant-sized teeth. And that flesh would probably get infected and rotten as time goes on, which is what led scientists to believe that if a dinosaur was ever bitten by a tyrannosaur, the septic bite would eventually destroy the creature even if it managed to escape. This was further expanded upon by dinosaur fans who used to look into the whole scavenging theory of T-Rex from Jack Horner. Dead carcasses the animal may have already eaten could have begun to rot and decay, which could lead your brain to thinking, well, maybe T-Rex was both a hunter and a scavenger, which ironically today we now believe to be pretty true, but it has nothing to do with the septic bite theory at all. That way, once a T-Rex had already eaten a whole bunch of raggedy rotten flesh and attacked literally anything that was walking around it, it would die from all of that bacteria going into its system. But you see, in the modern day, this whole toxic decaying attack and tactic from the T-Rex has fallen out of favor due to newer evidence that has been discovered. Over the years, we found prey animals of T-Rex, namely Edmontosaurus and Triceratops, that actually had been shown to suffer from Tyrannosaur bites on their skeletal frames, but they managed to get away and even show signs of healing on their skeletons before they died. Which means that the whole idea of a T-Rex bite being septic to the point of it actually killing its prey like this as a main strategy has fallen out of favor and other things put in its place. Not to mention the fact that years ago, we actually found out that Komodo dragons do not possess a septic bite at all. And in fact, their bites are actually venomous, believe it or not. Which has always been something fascinating to me that scientists have just now gotten around to figuring out? I mean, we've known this animal has existed today for how many years and only in the last decade or so we find out about its venom? Talk about crazy, it's like, it's not a dinosaur, just go research one, they still live. But yeah, the whole point of fact being, if an animal got away from a T-Rex and the T-Rex actually ripped parts of its bones off and those bones started to heal, it probably didn't have a septic bite tactic to kill its prey to what we used to believe. Anyways, in regard to Tyrannosaurus and the theory involving a possible septic bite, this was something that I think could have made for one seriously scary scene in a Jurassic Park movie, or even something that I think people could still adapt to this day if it was done scientifically in a plausible manner. Because it's not to say that the flesh that got stuck in the Tyrannosaurus mouth would never not become rotten or infected. I mean, it very well could and probably did, but it just probably wasn't the main thing that particular dinosaur would have to rely on when taking 
taking on prey like Triceratops or Ankylosaurus. Still, I remember reading the Michael Crichton novel and attributing the death of Dr. Ian Malcolm to that in my own fan theory sort of way before I read The Lost World. I imagine that Dr. Malcolm got bit in the leg and he was using the morphine to like keep the pain of that infected flesh from killing him away and I was a kid man but T-Rex loses so many teeth already just by naturally hunting and surviving on its own. I'm not so sure it would really be that realistic of a theory anymore anyways. Still, you got to admit, it's a definitely terrifying way to go. If someone were able to get away from a T-Rex only to look down at a gangly level of mangled flesh from other animals that have been pushed deep inside of their own wound, followed by a foul stench and maybe even foaming saliva all over it, that well that would be like one truly scary realization and one that I think made for some really cool conversations on the King of the Dinosaurs way back in the day. The way Tyrannosaurus Rex typically kills its prey is just from that massive bite force, man. Like I said, there's a reason why so many people were upset that the King of the Dinosaurs kept getting pushed around in the later Jurassic Park and World movies. This is a tank of an animal, even without the septic bite. But make no mistake, at the time, this was a really scary theory, and it's one that I, I kind of wish we would bring back, even if just to kind of talk about it again. It doesn't have to be a main attribute, but it is something that I think is really, really fun. And again, I haven't heard anyone speak about this in years, so I figured I'd make a video on it. One of the things that I think made the septic bite theory so terrifying was the idea of an animal actually escaping from the literal jaws of a T-Rex only to be hunted down for the next couple of days while it was dying from the infectious bite. Think about it, if an animal like Triceratops had managed to fend the Rex off and even stab it with those massive horns, wounding the Tyrannosaur and forcing it back, a well-placed bite delivered literally anywhere on the trike's body could have resulted in impending doom. If a dinosaur like that managed to win the battle only to slowly walk away with a gaping wound on its body over the course of the next few days, it could slowly start to accumulate tons of other carnivorous dinosaurs hot on its trail. Maybe scavenging creatures just waiting for it to die, or even other hunters patiently waiting uh, in the bushes as it's struggling along, flies all around the wound. It's gnarly to think about, and at that point, the T-Rex isn't even part of the equation. It's just the mere encounter with the animal resulted in an eventual death. That to me sounds like an offensive mechanism that is beyond hardcore in the dinosaur world. And the fact that this all came from the minor speculation on how Komodo dragons hunt their prey, it's even more interesting to me. I mean, it's wild, man. <laughs> Anyways guys, these are all just my own thoughts and opinions on the subject matter. What do you think about this old theory involving the T-Rex, and would you like to see something like this brought forward in a future movie? I think it would be really cool for a Jurassic Park film set in the 90s. I mean, you could even have this fun thing talk about like, it's not because it's a T-Rex, but it's because of the genetic mutation that actually has gone forth from, uh, you know, splicing the DNA. But anyways, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear all about them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives, as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video guys and as always, take it easy.